Hello, hello, it is Creature, and today I'm going to be showing you a game that everybody knows about, but no one knows exactly what the fuck it is. A game that stands to truly solidify itself in the annals of current gaming psyche, longer than the five weeks that Among Us did and whatever came before that. Honestly, what, what, what did come before that? I, I remember Ghosts and then Keanu Reeves, but that's about it. Anyway, Valheim. In order to properly convey the story of this game, I'm going to request that you all pause the video, build a bonfire, acquire some sacrificial Christians, Muslims, or whatever non-Nordic religious group you can find, and prepare to send them to Odin. Got it all? Wonderful. Long ago, there were two realms known as Nilfheim and Muf... Mus Mufuselheim? I don't know. These were ice and fire respectively. From those two realms, a giant form named Ymir. Ymir was kind of in the void between the two realms without much to do. So, like anybody without too much to do, he took a nap. And from his dank pit sweat, he made two other giants, a male and a female. And then another one from his leg. Okay, this is where things get a little weird, so... Buckle up, buckaroos. Those giants being made from his dank sweat is how life was created. These giants sustained themselves on a cow that also appeared out of the void, and the cow fed itself by licking some salty ice from the ice world. Out of this ice came the first god, who was the father of Odin and two other gods that aren't really that important. So anyway, Ymir died, and Odin and the boys chopped up his body, and glossing over some other stuff, made the worlds of dwarves, humans, elves, etc. Well, where do you come in? You are a viking who fell on the field of battle, as any good Norseman should. However, instead of being brought to Valhalla like you were promised, Daddy Odin has a job for you. Well, you see, Odin made a lot of enemies in his lifetime and has locked up or killed just about most of them. However, they got out. So in order to get to Valhalla, one of Odin's ravens informs you that you are to hunt down and kill all of his enemies that have escaped into the realm of Valheim in order to get to paradise. In order, they are Ekelfir, or Eikfir, the Lightning Elk, the Elder, aka Big Ass Angry Groot, the Bone Mass, with a very self-explanatory name, Motor, a big-ass fucking dragon, and finally, Yagtooth, another big skeleton. It should also be noted that there are plans to add four more bosses and four more biomes to go along with them, but as of recording, this game is barely a month old and an update is coming out in a few hours, so I'm not going to touch too much on that. After all of that, and after killing the bosses, you stick their heads onto a summoning circle and congratulations, you win. I think. I still haven't gotten that far yet. In fact, I've spent most of my time in the game autistically building stuff and exploring the world. But before we get on to gameplay, I just want to touch on the sound design of this game. This game is only a gig. That's right one gig, and at first it looks kinda crusty. However, once you start playing it, it looks really, really good. The game proves that the overall texture quality of the game doesn't really matter as long as you have good post-processing, lighting, and other graphical terms, a game can look exceptional. All these character models look really good as well. The animations for the attacks allow you to figure out how to attack as well as block, but I'm getting way ahead of myself. The music in this game is awesome as well. I really have nothing bad to say about any of the artistic choices made with this game. The soft music in the background seems to always perfectly accompany what you're doing, whether it be running around on foot, hunting, vlogging, or sailing. It doesn't linger longer than it needs to, and it can just sort of fade out and let the silence of the in-game sound effects take over. You know, sounds of water rushing across your ship's hull, meat cooking on an open fire, grey dwarves uh, throwing rocks at your base. It's quite peaceful, and there are different tracks for each biomes, and also different tracks for whenever your base is under attack, depending on how hard the threat is. Since I've already said a few combat words a few times, might as well start there. Combat in Valheim is very simple, but not too simple to where it feels like a mash fest. You have to counter and parry enemies in order to get attacks of opportunity which will deal massive damage. However, if you do decide to mash, the game at first won't really care, but later on is going to punish you severely by allowing enemies to get attacks of opportunity on you. Overall, the game is very peaceful, and I say peaceful with quotations. There's a lot of downtime in the game that allows you to expand and progress at your own rate. You are never rushed, however, the game does not hold your hand. For the most part, you're going to have to figure things out on your own. And 
For the first time you play, that's going to seem extremely daunting, but with a little bit of time, you'll require a few bits of armor and a weapon and then kill Ikefear, which is also the requirement to get the first pickaxe. That's right, if you want to mine, kill a god. Nothing is given to you and nothing can be taken for granted, as shelter and food are extremely important. Shelter is necessary in order to craft things as well as to make a respawn point, and it does offer bonuses to your health and stamina for a time. There is no starvation, you're already dead. Instead, food serves to give you more of a health and stamina boost for a good amount of time, and these can be extremely large boosts. The difference between being able to survive a troll smacking you in the face with a tree and death is a balanced breakfast. And by this, I mean you start off with 25 base health, but if you eat some carrot soup, uh, suckle down some raw honey and some meat, you're going to have well over 100 hit points. Speaking of homes, building is extremely fun and honestly is one of my favorite parts of the games. It feels good and can also be a huge time sink if you're waiting for your buddies to get on. Did I mention this game has multiplayer? Well, it is, but circle I'll back. circle back to that. Building and farming are important, not just for dabbing on your friends who just got the game a few hours ago, but also for protecting your stuff, as you will be raided by the in-game enemies a lot. There are four levels, and each is corresponding to which boss you've just killed. Kill the first boss, and you get a first level raid. Kill the fourth, you get a fourth level raid. Simple. And it's necessary to defend against these raids, as they will destroy everything you have, setting you back to square one. Personally, after my first raid, I built walls around my base, and when my friends told me that trolls would start appearing, I dug a big-ass dry moat. Just some ideas for whoever decides to pick up the game. Also, tools and armor and weapons can be repaired for free at the workshop, so don't worry about the too-good-to-use syndrome. In this game, it costs nothing to repair stuff. But going back to food. Food is in abundance in this game and respawns frequently. You can also farm, which I do recommend doing as soon as possible, because the things that you can make with farming and having a stable source of food is extremely helpful. For early players, I recommend you hunt down beehives. They can be found in abandoned shacks in the meadows. You can shoot them with your bow to avoid damage. Also, pick up the queen. You will thank me later. Progression in this game is exponential, and in that way, it's a lot like Terraria, where you'll spend a few hours farming to get equipment just to go kill the next boss, and rinse and repeat. And a good way to look at this game would be if you mixed Terraria, Seven Days to Die, and Minecraft, and then fermented it in mead for a few days and gave it an axe and told it to go bring glory to Valhalla. Anyway, in terms of progression, the gap between Ikefear and the Elder, I beat Ikefear within a few hours of playing the game, if not even within the first hour. It took me another two days to get to the point uh, where I could confidently take on the Elder. The difference between the two is astounding. For the first, you needed a bow, some armor, and maybe a flint axe if you were feeling spicy. For the Elder, you need metal armor, a ship, an outpost in hostile territory, a solid way to produce food, as well as defenses in order to protect said outposts as well as your home base. You'll also need the resources to make metal, which is also takes a good amount of time on their own which involves delving into ancient runes in order to find smoldering cores so that you may be able to kindle the flames of some elder world. Lastly, exploration. The exploration in this game is amazing, as you're forced to go out and brave the seas in order to find more places to loot as well as bosses you need to kill. The game allows you to set up portals, which are relatively cheap. However, you can't go through portals if you have valuables like metal ore on you though it can be very useful from getting from place to place, and it wouldn't be a viking game without boats. There are three kinds of ships, and each one is faster than the last. They are also do give you a good amount of storage for transporting metals from island to island. Oh, right, and before I forget, the co-op in this game is extremely fun. I honestly think it makes this game about ten times better. It's very easy to join someone if they're in your Steam friends list, as well as joining the community servers. You can even set down your own wards in order to keep people from getting into your stuff, so they act kind of like a TC from Rust. Your friends can authorize themselves on it, and they can use it to open your doors and your chests. Last thing, if you do play, plan on playing multiplayer, you can only play on a world that you own or that your friend is currently in. And by that I mean, if you and your friend are playing co-op on a certain world, but that world is being hosted by your friend, you cannot join in on that world if they're offline or not in said world. Once the owner goes offline, the server closes. 
So that's pretty much it. There's a whole lot in this game, and it only takes up about a gig of hard drive space, and it is extremely fun. I didn't really even have a plan on making this video, but after playing it for a bit, I can easily say it is extremely worth it. It says early access, but it's an extremely playable game that in the state is it's in right now, I've not really found any bugs or any kind of game-breaking things. Everything works great, and I'd highly recommend this one. I give it a final score of 9 out of 10, and I can't wait for it to fully be completed. They currently have a roadmap up for the things that they want to implement in the year of 2021, and from what I can see, they're extremely reasonable expectations for the upcoming year. Well, that's it for this one. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I've got a few bigger projects coming soon that I know I've been hinting at for a bit. They're definitely on the way. They just are going to take a little bit of time. However, I do have a few more videos that I do plan on putting out before then, so I'll see you on the next one. Peace.